Okay, so our session is being recorded. Uh, we will get started with a word of prayer. Uh, who would like to pray today? Anyone? Okay, Arun, do you do you want to pray? Sure, sure, Pastor. Yeah. Let me pray. Father, we just want to say thank you for blessing this another new day to soak into your work, Lord Father. Lord, as we begin our learning, Lord Father, Lord, I pray for it. Uh, Pastor Nancy, Lord Father, give her wisdom and knowledge, Lord Father, as she's going to teach us, Lord Father, in Jesus. In your coming work, Lord Father. And Lord Father, I pray for all our students, uh, for all the students, Lord Father. Open up our heart to receive your work, Lord Father. And Lord Father, as we journey and walk with you, Lord Father, help us to abide in our daily work, Lord Father. Lord, so Lord, I, I submit this day all the students passing into your life again. In Jesus' most precious name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you. Thank you so much, Aran. Uh, so in the last class, we were studying about the life of Saul and how uh, God encountered him. And from a persecutor, he uh, gave his heart to Christ and he became a passionate follower of Christ. So most of the uh, chapter talked about that. And later on, we saw how he tried to preach, but he was not accepted. So uh, he went away. Uh, right, so he lived in the regions of Arabia uh, for for some time, and then he went off to uh, the region of Cilicia, where I think we, he did a, most of his ministry, which we don't know, uh, which is not like you don't have too much written about it, except that Paul himself shares these details uh, in some of his other writings. Then later we saw the ministry of Peter how peter ministered how uh, you know he uh, healed he healed somebody who was uh, one second who was lame right yeah lita the region of one second yes the region of lita Peter healed a man called Aeneas, uh, who was bedridden for eight years. So we saw that miracle. Then we saw a, a spectacular miracle of a lady who was dead. Dorcas, also known as Tabitha. She was raised from the dead by Peter. So this is these are things that the, the early church continues to move in. And then we uh, also saw how Peter was now staying with a person called Simon. Simon is a tanner. And I told you that it's not the uh, most uh, sort of, you know, sought after profession. Uh, those who were tanners were generally living outside the city and uh, they were not considered, you know, as a, a high, they were not considered highly in the society. And yet, uh, we, we know that God had worked in the heart of Peter because Peter was a person who, uh, you know, from, from his personality, description of his personality, we understand that he was not very easily accepting of uh, people. But by now, God had worked in his heart, right? So that is something we can take back. And now, uh, coming to the next chapter here, this is a description of a person called Cornelius. Now, the beautiful thing about Cornelius is that he is a devout person. Uh, he is not a Jew and yet his devotion touches the heart of God. Okay, so uh, that is that is really wonderful. And he also feared and he worshipped this God, right? He worshipped God. Uh, so... The, the God of the Jews. And that is recognized by God. Now, part of his devotion, he also gave generously and prayed to God. Does God commend such people? 
definitely because uh, though he did not belong to the jewish community god recognized him and chose to work in his life by even sending one of the apostles to him to share the gospel so you know uh, today is it possible that god would send somebody to a person who belongs to a different community somebody who uh, is is wanting to be uh, wanting to live a righteous life for god yeah why not because you see that in the life of cornelius so god can send and how did god actually send peter to cornelius this is what we are going to see now so uh, we are already aware that uh, peter is in the house of simon the tanner and uh, while he is going about his daily routine okay so as part of the daily routine of a devout jew is his his or her prayer times so you notice that uh, peter in the ninth hour it says oh sorry uh, oh yeah this is peter peter in the ninth hour he saw a vision okay and in the vision there is an angel now we have talked about this there are many ways in which god communicates to us it could be dreams it could be visions it could be uh, an angel in real life in this case there is an angel in the vision okay coming and speaking to hang on oh yeah the first vision comes to cornelius okay and then later we will see that uh, the same similar vision also comes to peter so talking about cornelius okay everyone sorry for the confusion we are talking about cornelius right now who is a devout gentile and he is praying to god at the ninth hour and he is the one who receives the vision so when he receives the vision he asks the, he is afraid obviously and he asks the question what is it lord and so uh, the angel said to him your prayers and your arms have come up for a memorial before god meaning god is remembering the good works which you have done uh, as devotion and as worship to him so he says now i want you to do something and that is to take the men okay take the men uh, to a place called jopa and you try to reach out to a person called simon whose surname is peter so god is giving very specific instructions even in uh, acts chapter 9 we saw that right there is ananias who uh, is informed about the place where he must go to meet saul so uh, we see that god and his instruction and his directions are so specific uh, in the way he led these people so uh, cornelius is told to send people to reach out to peter now peter's address is also given uh he is told that you know the simon uh, uh he is lodging with another simon uh, who is a tanner whose house is by the sea okay so you go to him uh, and he will tell you what you must do so god was actually preparing cornelius's heart to receive the word which peter was supposed to bring to him today is it possible that god can prepare uh, the hearts of people in the world out there to hear from us why not you know who knows somebody might have a dream or a vision and what if you are in the dream or the vision right uh, anything is possible but it is according to the direction of the holy spirit so when the angel had spoken to cornelius he calls for two of his servants and he tells them you know at with a soldier and he tells them to uh go he explains all this this is what i saw a vision and all that and i want you to go to this place called jopa and as instructed you know you go and meet this man called simon so on the next day they go on this journey and uh, uh they went close to the city now at the time right like when they were traveling and they were moving to meet peter peter is on the house top 
he is also praying now this is the sixth hour okay so similar to your uh, cornelius who is devoted in prayer you have peter who is also devoted in prayer uh, and you know he is praying but at the same time he is hungry okay so the food is uh, probably being prepared by simon the tanner uh, his family uh, but peter is waiting he is praying and he is hungry and he really wanted to eat uh, but while he was in this state okay so there is a physical uh, state of being hungry and a spiritual state where he is seeking god uh, we read that he fell into a trance what is a trance everyone anyone knows what is a trance dream vision all that we understood what is a trance you can share your thoughts is it familiar another realm okay kanan says another realm traveling in the spirit thomas says okay all right okay yeah these are uh, certainly su some descriptions uh but trance has to do more with as uh, kanan pointed out it's like you are in another realm you are in the spiritual realm okay though we are a physical being we find ourselves in the spiritual realm and at that time usually like a trance uh, is a is a period when the physical body may become weak and uh, uh, something like a sleep like state the physical body is uh, not functioning but in the spirit you are very much there and you are alive and you are uh, able to to engage in what god is showing you in the spiritual realm so it's like that so we can imagine that peter his body fell asleep but his spirit was engaging very actively and uh, alertly in the spirit so uh, i hope that is clear what a trance is right so you are engaging in the spirit you're engaging in the spirit while your body is uh you know weak and uh, you could also be like in a state of sleep okay so while peter is in this condition uh he is seeing certain things happen in the spirit realm so what is he seeing there's a beautiful description of what god shows him he sees the heavens are opening okay uh and something like a sheet is uh, is spread out to the four corners uh and on that sheet he sees animals all kinds of animals four footed animals wild beasts creeping things birds of the air and a voice comes to him and says rise peter kill and eat and peter says not so lord for i have never eaten anything common or unclean and a voice spoke to him again and the second time what god has cleansed you must not call common this was done three times and the object was taken up into heaven again so you know a few things we see is uh, you have uh, some symbolism going on in the vision oh we are not calling it a vision it's a trance there is some uh, some things that he is observing in the trance but we know that in the prophetic there's symbolism meaning you see you see objects you see people you see things but it means it has a meaning to it 
okay so obviously peter would have known that there is a meaning to to what all this is but he is watching wh whatever uh, god is showing him so there's a sheet and all kinds of animals and god is telling him now that you are hungry why don't you rise up you know kill and have these animals so uh, if we understand the background of the old testament you know there was this whole teaching about uh, kosher and non kosher animals okay so basically there were there were some rules in the uh, old testament where people were told god's people were told not to eat some animals who were unclean by god's standards so you could eat all the other animals but not certain animals but here it's as if you know god is showing him something better and telling him that no it's okay you you can have it okay and peter is a faithful jew so he says no god like how can i do this how can i uh, uh disobey what has been already taught to us but he is encouraged right he is encouraged to go ahead and eat these animals so what is the interpretation from this you know people say that god was saying that oh yeah now you can eat all animals that's a great thing you know so you get to enjoy uh, uh several creatures as food is that the final point of what god was trying to tell man no i told you about symbolism right so through the symbolism you know peter would have thought different things okay what does it mean unclean animals unclean animals might mean uh you know is it because i'm staying in simon the tanner's house is that something to do with what i'm seeing so all these thoughts are going through his mind and even while peter is wondering to himself what the vision uh, he has seen meant right at that time you have the people who were sent by cornelius coming up to simon's house they are standing before the gate and they are asking for simon peter so while peter thought about the vision immediately the holy spirit tells him so peter has still not understood what he has seen but he receives his next instruction what is that behold there are three men who are seeking you and uh, you need to arise and go down with them don't doubt anything or doubting nothing for i have sent them so he immediately goes okay so this is uh, interesting you know peter has not yet received the meaning of what he saw but god is guiding him okay uh, to take the next step so we'll see what exactly happens so along with these people he goes to the house of cornelius okay uh, and cornelius okay yeah so uh, obviously before he steps out he uh, uh, is told by these people that they have come from cornelius and then they give a description of cornelius they say he's a just man one who fears god with a good reputation uh, and the fact that he is a um that he was divinely instructed by the divinely instructed by god very similar to how peter was instructed by god uh, and you know uh, that cornelius had told for peter to be brought okay so peter goes on the next day he went away with them and some brethren from jopa also accompanied him now again you know we don't have clarity in these verses whether peter fully understood what god was doing in his life okay and the next day he uh, kind of goes there and uh, uh, you know he sees that cornelius is waiting for this person how is he waiting he's waiting not just by himself but he's waiting with relatives and close friends so you know just a few things that we can talk about and then again we will come back to what is going on so uh, what do you what do you see in the way god leads us from what happened to peter 
any insights i described whatever happened so what are some lessons that we see Okay, so God is making a connect between two uh, human beings who don't know each other. Then um, God is instructing uh, Peter. But even in our lives, you know, sometimes we have received one instruction from God and we are trying to understand it. Okay, uh, and maybe we have not fully understood it. But then comes the next instruction. So, you know, for us to fully understand some things, it may not just be God telling us, you know, uh, do this or do that. Or, uh, um, you know, this is what it means. But we may need to step out with the next instruction that God is giving us. And as we follow that, we will have a better understanding of what God spoke earlier. Okay, so that's exactly the case for Peter because uh, he was told, don't call anything unclean. And he's wondering, what is this? What is this? Now, Cornelius's people have come and God told him, go doubting nothing. So he takes the next step. So sometimes, you know, we, we have to take the next step for us to um, truly learn what God is guiding us to do. So, uh, yeah, Kiran, uh, you're asking a question, can it happen nowadays? So what, what exactly are you, what, can what happen? Nowadays, uh, can you be more specific? Ma'am, something like a unknown, some some unknown words. God, God can talk like uh, two or three people once. It can happen nowadays. Ma yeah, Kiran, I mean, if you've seen it happen over here, I think we, we can also see it happen in our lives. Only thing is, uh, Peter also had a confirmation from his side, isn't it? So he knew that these people will come and he has to go. So the important thing is for us to uh, be led by the Holy Spirit. Because unless we are led by the Holy Spirit, I mean, how would you, if, if some random people come and say, okay, Kiran, please come. Uh, we want you to go with us to, uh, you know, somebody's house. It's difficult, right, for us to take that. But if you also have a witness in your spirit, yes, you can go. Yeah, so it can happen very much. Okay, so Prince is saying sometimes it's confusing how we see clearly, uh, how we say clearly this is a dream or a vision. Okay, so uh, you know Prince, um, dreams are visions of the night. That's how, you know, some people classify it. Visions of the night means... Uh, these are visions that you see when you sleep. So that is a dream. Otherwise, a vision can be seen at any time. Even when you are awake, you can see a vision. Okay. But a dream is something that we see only when we sleep. So you know, uh, it, they are also known as visions of the night. Because like people sleep and see dreams.
okay and uh, yeah some thoughts here on the chat where uh, you know arun is saying that we need the courage to step out true so uh, god gives more revelation when we work with the previous revelation that he has given us now imagine if uh, uh, peter never stepped out okay and peter if he said something like uh, unless you explain to me what has happened i'm not going to go lord he would have been stuck but when he even when he did not understand fully he was willing to take the next clear instruction and the three men who came he went with them so you know that's a lesson for us yes there may be a few things which are not yet clarified uh by god in what he spoke to us earlier we are thinking about it we are praying about it but we have the next set of clear instructions for our lives we just do that be faithful to that surely god will give you clarity on every matter that uh you know you you need to know so that is the point that you know i i wanted to bring for us here and also uh, we will see how um, you know when we talked about the ethiopian eunuch and how god led philip small instructions here and there but ultimately through his obedience the gospel was going to enter the continent of africa something like that historical is happening in this case peter does not know fully he's still trying to understand what unclean i am a faithful jew you know why is god asking me to eat unclean animals he's still wondering but god is leading him into something great for the kingdom of god so god's instructions when they come to us even when you know we have prayed sought god we don't have clarity on everything don't let that stop you from moving into the things that god has given you clarity about okay and when we step out and we start doing things they could be seemingly simple things that god is asking us to do we may not understand the extent to which he is working in the kingdom of god whom he is touching you know what is going to come out of it we may not fully understand but what is our uh uh responsibility trust god be obedient be faithful to the small instructions of god okay yes uh yeah so dev is saying god gives uh confirmations to what he is asking us to do yeah even that is something we see isn't it because if god did not speak to peter peter would say i'm not going who are these people i'm not going to go with them but god gives confirmation you remember we talked about uh, the birth of jesus the birth of jesus there was a confirmation that god gave even to joseph so mary would have thought how 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 am i going to take take up this like you know if you look at it as a ministry god was calling her for her ministry and she would have wondered is it possible you know uh, will the most important people in my life accept this ministry god put the same thing in joseph's heart so then what happened you know, there was a confirmation so as a team they both knew we are serving the purpose of god this ministry is from god to give birth to the savior of the world the lord jesus christ so god is faithful in that way he gives us the confirmation we need for us to have the courage we need to step out but yes who has to step out we have to step out there is no other way you know if if we say no i i can't i will not go then we are just delaying the unfolding of the purposes of god so uh, that is something we must bear in mind yes god can give us confirmations 
all right uh, we will proceed from here just a moment Sorry about that class. Yeah, let's continue. All right. So now that Peter has come, we are looking at Cornelius as a, a very expectant individual. He has also seen the vision. That's how he sent to uh, bring Peter to his house. Now, he is so expectant that he's not there alone. He has gathered together his relatives and his close friends. You know, so it, it just shows us what kind of a person Cornelius is. Apart from being God fearing, apart from being devout, generous, he is a very uh, caring person. He is somebody who wants to bless others. Okay, and those he loves. So he has gathered everyone. Okay, fine. By the coming of this man called Simon, if at all. I am going to be blessed. How about my family is also blessed by it? So he's gathered everybody. So there's a lot of excitement in Cornelius's house as Peter comes. Peter has some men with him from Joppa and they, they are coming to Cornelius' house. Okay. Now, as Peter comes in, Cornelius meets him and he falls at his feet and worships him. So it's very... Uh, uh, sad that the person who is devout to God, towards God, he does not fully understand how to worship God. So he is doing his part. You know, there are some people uh, like that in the world. They don't know how exactly, what is the kind of worship God is looking for. You know, we know because of Jesus and the words of Jesus, you know, the Holy Spirit taught taught us through what Jesus said uh, you know, in John 4, 23, that they who worship the Lord, they must worship him in spirit and in truth. That is the right way of worshiping him. But there can be people who don't know the word of God and they are just doing their best to worship God in an acceptable way. So Cornelius is doing the same thing. You know, he bows down at the feet of Peter. And he would have thought this is the right way. You know, I should also honor this, this man whom God has sent to me. But Peter lifts him up saying, stand up. I myself am also a man. Now, do you remember even when the glory was given to Peter and John for the healing of the lame man at Gate Beautiful, they said, why are you looking at us? As if we did something great. But this man has received strength because of the name of Jesus. So we observe that Peter is very careful to give the glory to God. Okay. Uh, uh, is, it, is it like a... Uh, uh, how do I put it? Anyone here, have you gone on a mission trip or some ministry trip and uh, uh, engaged in very good ministry and you come back? Uh, how do you feel once maybe let's say some miracles have happened, you preached very well uh, and you know people appreciate you. How do you feel at that moment? Very proud of ourselves. Yeah, you're right. Correct. So we feel very proud of ourselves. Uh, we feel, you know, as if it's a high. Just in the previous passage, I told you, Peter's ministry was not ordinary. Another man, Aeneas, eight years paralysis or bedridden, he raised that person up. Tabitha Dorcas raised from the dead. Okay. So, did Peter feel very good about himself? Yeah, he must have felt good about himself. But Peter recognizes 
that the power is from god it's not his own power okay and the way john the baptist uh, said he said look i am just a messenger but who is the one who is greater the he is the one who comes after me and then you know john the baptist said let him increase let me decrease we find the same attitude in peter great ministry just by preaching just by uh, you know seeing some miracles we might feel so excited but uh, even after raising the dead when cornelius is falling at his feet what is peter saying i'm just a man okay so you why are you worshiping me i'm just a man okay even later in the book of acts we'll see paul uh and uh, his teammates so they too will receive this kind of an appreciation from the people because of what god is doing through their lives but they are very careful to give the glory to god and that is the lesson we must learn no matter how good our ministry is you know how supernatural our ministry is you know, how much we grow in god and how much of anointing we carry god is god and the glory does not belong to man the glory belongs to god and we must always be careful to give the glory to god and that is what you observe here you see that uh, peter immediately he says come on i'm just a man and the worship does not belong to man okay let's move on now they are talking peter he went in he saw so many so many uh, people gathered there uh, and then you know he he says you know do you know how unlawful it is for a jewish man to keep company with or go to one of another nation but god has shown me that i should not call any man common or unclean therefore i came without objection as soon as i was sent for i ask then for what reason have you sent for me so remember i told you that peter did not get the interpretation of the vision that he saw uh, in his trance but now he is actually speaking the interpretation of the vision he understood so with the unclean and the clean animals the symbolism that god was showing was that there were some people who were considered unclean by the jews even cornelius he is not of uh, you know he is of a different community he is of a different he says look go to one of another nation or a non jewish person so the jews would never go but what was god telling peter god was saying look the gospel is for everybody earlier in acts 8 we saw that the samaritans they were not considered very respectable people because they were a mixed race yet the gospel was preached to them now god is again breaking all the biases or breaking all the walls which peter has within himself he would have never gone but god had to do a work in peter's heart to convince him that now the gospel is open for people from every nation every tribe every tongue so when these three men come and they ask you to go along with them i want you to go so when peter comes into cornelius's house he has realized this is what the dream means the unclean animals represent the nations the non jewish nations or the non jewish communities or the non jewish people groups whom god accepts and so we have to go and share the gospel to everyone and not make a distinction between uh, you know the so called chosen of god and all the others who are not chosen of god so 
Peter understood this. Now, again, as they are talking, they are interacting in Cornelius's house. Cornelius also shares about his own vision. So basically, he explains the whole thing. He says that, look, when I was praying in my house, I saw a, a man with a bright clothing standing in front of me. So he is giving a description of an angel, okay, whom he saw in that vision. And then uh, he describes how God told him, all your prayers have come to me. Now you send somebody to Simon the Tanner's house and call for this person immediately. So that is what he has done. And that is the reason. So Cornelius is explaining and saying, that is the reason I have called you. Now, he is excited. This vision has come from God. And God is asking for a man called Peter to come to him. There must be a lot of things that Peter can probably tell him about true worship and about drawing closer to God. So he says to Peter, now therefore, we are all present before God to hear all the things commanded you by God. So he understood that in this moment, God is sending a messenger and his heart was prepared to receive everything from the messenger. And he's saying, Peter, okay, come on, you tell us. You tell us everything that God has put in your heart. So now it says, Peter opened his mouth. <laughs> that was the uh, common thing that you see Peter do almost everywhere, right? In the book of Acts, he's ready to talk. He's ready to launch out and he's ready to uh, take leadership. So he rises up. And he talks. What is he going to talk about? You know, we, we will see. We know that the subject of what the apostles and the believers preached, it's always the Lord Jesus Christ. So obviously, Peter is going to preach the gospel to a person of another nation. That's what he does. He preaches about the Lord Jesus. So he says, look, now I understand. Now I realize that God shows no partiality, okay? Uh, God wants the gospel to go out to the ends of the earth, covering all kinds of people. And, you know, God is a God who is a, um, like... It says, but in every nation, whoever fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him. So, you know, God is watching those who are hungry for him. God is watching those who are hungry for him. And then he goes on to say that preaching peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all, that word you know, which was proclaimed throughout Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with Holy Spirit and power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. So basically he talks about the Lord Jesus and how he was anointed, how he did the work of God and how he, um, you know, uh, was killed. He was raised from the dead and that he is the one Right, who is going to judge the living and the dead. So uh, he exalts the Lord Jesus and he lets Cornelius know that this God, or at that time we could say that Cornelius only would have had the idea of God as that, you know, old covenant God, Jehovah God. But he would have never known about the Lord Jesus who came to price uh, pay the price for us. So as was the common practice of the early church, they preached about Jesus. So here is Peter very clearly, everything about the life of Jesus and the work of Jesus, he preaches to Cornelius. So what is supposed to happen when we preach the truth of the gospel to the people? Even while they were listening, we are told in verse 44, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word. So that means that the word of God began to work in the hearts of the people. And they accepted Christ. Okay, they accepted Christ even as they were listening to the message. Is that possible? 
is it possible for people to just like you know usually preachers have this uh, 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 altar call or uh, salvation prayer that they pray with you know they they pray that prayer with those who are accepting christ now is it possible that even before we ask people to do that they give their hearts their lives to the lord jesus is it possible yes we have seen it here so the people who had gathered to whom peter was preaching they already accepted oh yes jesus is the messiah and on whom can the holy spirit be poured out only on a believer so were they believers were they believers yes they had already become believers no wonder the holy spirit was poured out on them while peter was preaching and also notice the amazing thing here that in the past it was always Uh, when the disciples or the apostles went and laid hands you know simon the sorcerer he saw that when they laid hands the gift of the holy spirit was being given to the people so he said okay i'll give you money give me this gift but in this case they did not even lay hands and the holy spirit fell on the people okay so that also shows us that the baptism in the holy spirit is not something which man does yeah we will lay hands on human beings but we are not the baptizers what if we don't lay hands on the people as john the baptist said about jesus he will baptize you with holy spirit and fire so the one who comes after me he will baptize you with holy spirit and fire so who is the baptizer jesus is the baptizer so no wonder peter did not lay hands on godilus and his family members and friends but while he was still speaking the words the holy spirit fell upon all those who heard the word and those of the circumcision who believed were astonished okay and uh, basically the gift of the holy spirit was poured out on who for the first time remember i told you something historic these gentiles were baptized in the holy spirit and you never read about that happening before this so acts 1:8 the the gospel going out from jerusalem judea samaria and to the ends of the earth also the communities from the jews to the gentiles to all kinds of communities you know the gospel was going out and god was uh, doing this miraculous work of moving the work from just the jews to the gentiles okay so that's what we see happen here through the ministry of peter to the household of cornelius so at this point i think it's uh, 9:50 so let us take a small break and we will come back and continue from uh, the same point okay so 10 minute break class uh, we will come back together at 10:01 thank you